The most beautiful game in the world, that's easy, basketball. The energy, action, aggression, all surging around the court. Attackers and defenders trying to outdo each other. And then from nowhere, the player with the ball shoots and the laws of physics take over. The ball soars through a precise high arc towards the hoop in a perfect example of projectile motion. With no obvious time for calculation, the player has instinctively understood the horizontal distance that needs to be covered. The NBA three-point line is roughly 23 feet from the basket, and the height gain and loss needed to go from the hand upwards and then back downwards to land in a basket 10 feet off the ground. This calculation takes place in a fraction of a second while moving at speed and also trying to outwit the defender. If the player can get this calculation of the vertical and horizontal planes correct, then the ball will pass through the hoop and make the perfect swish sound and score points. Easy, right? Let's see how physics makes sense of this. This is Think4. When we consider the horizontal motion of a projectile, we assume there is no air resistance. And after we release the ball, there are no forces acting on the ball, so it continues at a constant speed. Denoted by this rather boring graph, and because the graph is so boring, we can use this simple equation V equals D over T to do calculations in the horizontal direction. If we think about a thrown ball vertically, we know that the object must always be accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. On a velocity time graph, this would look like this. The upper left portion of the graph represents the ball slowing down after it has left the hand. When it reaches the top of its arc, it must have a velocity of zero before it starts to accelerate back towards the ground. Whilst it looks like the ball is still moving in the same direction because the line has not changed, it is in fact now moving downwards. We can tell this as the velocity is negative and therefore in a different direction. So, to summarize, the ball is thrown up with some initial vertical velocity and gradually slows down due to gravity until it reaches the top of its arc here before accelerating down again. Because the ball is accelerating, our calculations here will require one of several possible equations. We call these the equations of motion or sometimes SUVAT, because those letters denote our key quantities. When trying to figure out what is happening vertically, the best thing to do is write SUVAT on your page and fill in the values you already know. Remember that acceleration will be 9.8 if we only look at the ball on the way up. V will be zero as it is about to change direction, or U will be zero if we only think about the second half of the motion and you will be given values for at least one of S, T, U, or V. For example, if I put some numbers on my graph, initial speed 19.6, I want to know how long it takes to reach its peak. I write initial speed U equals 19.6 meters per second, and final speed V equals zero, as that is when the ball reaches its peak, and A equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared, as it always does. Then I see that I have three out of four values for our equation V equals U plus AT. So I substitute in zero equals 19.6 plus brackets negative 9.8 times T. Rearranging for T gives us 19.6 divided by 9.8. So T equals two seconds. Quick tip, if you get a negative time, your acceleration value should be negative. So remember, there is no air resistance, all horizontal motion is at a constant speed, and all vertical motion is at a constant acceleration. And finally, a constant acceleration will speed you up, traveling in one direction, or slow you down in the other. If you can remember these key assumptions and apply them carefully to projectile questions, you will quickly find yourself getting the right answers and scoring well. You might also get better at basketball, but no promises. This was Think4. Thanks for watching.